Now, what, you what we see here is a, uh, an image of, of an infected plant leaf. Now, this is a transgenic plant in which the actin uh, um, is labeled also with talon. So you can see the, the uh, fluorescence of the actin uh, cytoskeleton. Up here, of course, you can see the, uh, the location of a, of a um, stomata, the, the holes through which uh, oxygen enters and, and gaseous exchange occurs. Here you see a non-infected cell, and down in this section, you can see, in fact, that there are uh, these, these globs, these blobs that I talked about earlier. Those represent the virus replication complexes we showed and talked about before. So what we're looking at is a very, a, a, a very interface between an infected cell and a non-infected cell. This one being non-infected, and these down here being infected. Notice that there's, not, in addition to having the, um, uh, these blobs or virus replication complexes in the cytosol, there are also some that are tightly oppressed to the cell wall. The position near the cell wall represents where the plasma desmata are. That we know by electron mic other ele electron micrographic studies. And, uh, in the and so this, this front shows that in the this cell at this point is not heavily infected, but yet there are still some uh, plasma desmata that are, that are um, labeled with the movement protein and the replication complex is either in or adjacent to the cell wall. In other cases, you can see that the, these factories are still out on the cytoplasm. This would represent where most of the virus replication is happening early on, or at least where most of the movement protein is being made. And then in this cell, it's, it's, not, it's a younger infection, and this cell is a non-infected cell. Now, if we, uh, if we put this into some sort of imaging, into a, a time frame, you can see that these globs move around within the cell and they fuse together. You saw that one just fuse with the large one, the small one fused with the large one. This large guy is going to start moving down on these actin uh, ca cables as well and moves all around the cell. That movement is very dynamic and we can mark it uh, by simply putting the microscope and, uh, on a cell and, and, and plot the rate at which it moves. By, by simply measuring the, uh, the rate of movement in, a in, a re in real time. So on the next slide, I'm going to show you uh, a series of, of stages of infection. One will be at 18 hours, at early after infection, 14 hours, and then 16 hours and 18 hours. I want you to look at the 14-hour infected cell, and you'll see that the bodies are very, very actively moving around the cell. And then the 16-hour stage, the bodies are moving very, very slowly. By 18 hours, they're dead stopped. And then nothing happens for a couple of hours. And then I'll show you down in, in the lower portion of the slide uh, a, a section in which the, the virus infection has moved from one cell to the next. So again, up in the upper uh, left-hand corner is where the in infection is now only 14 hours old. And, and you see those bodies are moving very, very rapidly as indicated by the uh, number below, 160. Uh, nanometers per second. At 16 hours after infection, those bodies are moving more slowly, very slowly indeed. By 18 hours, they've essentially stopped. And then at 20 hours, two hours later, you now see the infection is not just in a single cell, but is in three cells. The virus infection has moved from the first cell out to the next. And now the cells uh, that are recently infected, those that are up here in, uh, in, in the one portion and, and those that are down the, in the lower portion, are moving very rapidly. They're, in fact, moving at the same rate as the bodies at the 14-hour infection. What that told us was that, that in the first infected cell, it takes a long time to set up the virus replication factories. They start, uh, they're, they're made in that first 6 to 12 to 14 hours. By 14 hours, they begin to move around and fusing with each other and moving to the cell walls. And then they stop moving. There's a, 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 an immobility to the, whole, uh, uh, to the whole process. We had noted this before, that there's a time frame in which, in which uh, the mobility of cytoplasmic bodies stops. At this point, these, uh, you have the replication factors against the cell wall. And then we, we have other uh, films that show the virus bodies, these replication complexes, moving from one cell to the next. That surprised us. It was the first indication that what was moving from cell to cell was not the virion, but some sort of a pre-virion complex, perhaps containing viral RNA, maybe even double-stranded RNA, and, the and, and replicase and other components of the factory that were necessary to get it all started again. Then it goes into the next cell, 
and the replication cycle doesn't have to start from zero. It now can start from having built up from that first complex that was sent over. In fact, uh, by, um, if the first infection requires 20 hours to move from the first cell to the next, from the going from the cell number two to cell number three to cell number four is about an interval of four hours each. So it moves very rapidly from cell two to cell three, and that's why the virus infection can move throughout the cell uh, with, and throughout the tissue, throughout the whole plant in a relatively short period of time. It moves between cells, not as virions, but as, as um, sort of pro-virions or pro-structures uh, pro, uh, pro that include the replication complex.